Senator Singh. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. I also rise to speak on this condolence motion and pay tribute to Edward Gough Whitlam. And I do so with a sense of sadness, yet also gladness, that this great man, this Labor hero that has now passed, leaves such an indelible memory in our hearts and minds. In doing so, I would like to start by acknowledging uh, his family, Catherine, Nicholas, Tony, Stephen, and their partners and families, and give my sympathies to them. The year 1972 has always had a significant double meaning in my life, and it, mere coincidence though it may be, I was born the same year Gough Whitlam became Prime Minister of the first Federal Labor government for 23 years. And since 1972, Australia has never been the same. Because of Gough Whitlam, we never can be. The significant progressive policies implemented by his Labor government in such a short span, a short uh, time span, have been absolutely life changing. The opportunities that have been offered to me throughout my life are the fortuitous products of Gough Whitlam's courageous and ongoing reforms to Australian society. He makes me proud to be a member of the Australian Labor Party and he makes me proud to be an Australian. Gough's impact on my life and many from my generation and my parents' generation has been profound. But his impact on Australian society has been transformational. In the sad days since his death, I've been reflecting on the enormous influence he has had on Australia and the Australian Labor Party and the inspiration that he has given to so many Australian Labor Party members. I believe his impact was as unique as it was comprehensive, as substantive as it was stimulating. Such then, when the pages of his Australian history are turned in decades or centuries to come, Australia's 20th century will be identified in part, I believe, as Whitlam century. I believe we are so fortunate for his life and his enormous contribution to Australian politics. Many members of parliament and senators have remarked on that, and including the very heartfelt contribution from his dear friend, Senator John Faulkner. A man of substance and a leader with the intelligence, courage, wit, charisma, vision, ambition, social conscience and power of oratory to alter the course of our nation's history. This was Gough Whitlam, and we were lucky to have him. Gough Whitlam believed in our society, our institutions and our ambitions. Politically and socially, he was the catalyst for a modern, multicultural Australia, proud of its own identity. And personally, he lived out his progressive values every day while he sculpted Australia into a more equitable society. He personified the fundamental values at the heart of the Australian Labor Party's purpose. He wanted people to have the opportunity to reach their full potential, to be happy and to be what they wanted to be and not be held back by the barriers of class, wealth and social disadvantage. His uncompromising commitment to equal opportunity, women's empowerment and free education embedded egalitarianism into government policy. And in acknowledging and thanking his commitment to equality for women, I do pay tribute to his beloved wife, Margaret, who was such a driving force for equality. They were indeed a great partnership and she was indeed an incredible support and companion, a great woman herself. His achievements made in just three years continue to shape the lives of all Australians. His government introduced universal health care and no fault divorce. He established legal aid, reduced the voting age from 21 to 18, increased and indexed pensions, abolished the death penalty, abolished British honours system and introduced and established the Order of Australia established the Australian National Parks and Wildlife Service, initiated federal protection 
of the Great Barrier Reef, increased investment in all levels of education and increased investment in the arts. And hasn't Pollock's blue poles lasted the test of time? He gave us the Australian national anthem and endorsed the institution of Indigenous land rights. And how could we ever forget that image of the pouring of the sand from his hand into the hands of Vincent Lingari? As a strong campaigner for a republic, it would also be remiss of me to not mention that Gough united with Malcolm Fraser to campaign for a republic and to build our own identity and cement Australia's independence in doing so. However, this is yet still something we are to achieve. But it has been accurately written elsewhere that Whitlam also committed Australia to the highest standards of international citizenship. Abandoning Australia's fossilised attitudes to colonialism and long-held suspicions of Asia, he opened Australia to the world and in doing so, his government increased foreign aid spending, established diplomatic relations with China, granted independence to Papua New Guinea, withdrew Australia's troops from Vietnam and ended conscription, introduced that incredible, important policy of multiculturalism and formally abolished the white Australia policy, initiated a partnership with the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and pledged Australian financial assistance to its development program, banned South African apartheid sporting teams from visiting Australia and signed or ratified numerous United Nations conventions like the UNESCO World Heritage Convention, the Covenant on the Political Rights of Women, the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, and the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. As Senator Wong said, Gough Whitlam made Australia what it is today. He reminds us that politics is a cause, a noble pursuit, and he inspires us as Labor politicians to strive for equality in all that we do. Gough Whitlam introduced Australia to the world and the world to Australia. In many ways, he introduced Australia to itself, and in many ways, he set us free. Thank you, Prime Minister Gough Whitlam. <laughs>